he did. He gets it to Henry. Hey everyone, let's kick off our picks for week one of this season. Hopefully we'll have another good year, win you some money. It's week one, so we don't want to go too crazy with any teams, but there's a couple that I like that uh, we'll pick as some of the ones we'd like to bet, and we'll also pick scores for all the games regardless. So we'll start off with the season or opening defending champs game. It's Thursday night football. It's Baltimore at Kansas City. Now the over-under on this is 46 and a half last time I checked. Uh, Kansas City's dropped down minus three. I want to say they opened at minus two and a half. Either way, I still like Kansas City here. Not sure I'm going to bet that or at least just yet. I do want to look into a couple of concerns I have with Baltimore. I know they shifted a lot of pieces on their offensive line, but... Definitely like Kansas City minus three here. They've added some wide receivers. I know they lost Snead, and uh, you know the Ravens gained Henry. They lost Queen and some other pieces on the defense. I see this lower scoring than most people think. I'd probably lean more towards the underside. You know, last year in the playoffs it was uh, like 17 to 10 or something. So a little more than that, maybe 24-20 range. Kansas City at home to open the season. Next up, we have our first Friday game. This is in Brazil. This is Green Bay versus Philly. Philly's minus two and a half. I'm seeing a lot of people pick Green Bay money line here. Uh, 48 and a half is a pretty big number. I know people like how unders look early. However, I think both of these teams have a chance to score. They both ended the seasons on different ends of the spe spectrum with Green Bay op opening, ending super hot and Philly kind of fizzling at the end. However, Philly drafted well. They made good moves as usual. They brought Barkley into the fold. And assuming they have a competent replacement for Kelsey, I'm going to give Philly the edge here. This is one we're definitely going to avoid, but I'm going to pick for, uh, for this. Philly to just cover minus two and a half. Okay, on the first one that we actually like and that we have bet on, we got Pittsburgh at Atlanta. We bet on this actually months ago. I don't remember the exact number, but it's currently sitting at minus three. Uh, the number's 42. So, you know, Pittsburgh doesn't really score a lot in general, but I'd stick to Atlanta minus three. This is a team I think I'm higher on than most teams this year, or most people this year. Uh, they got Kirk Cousins. They had a lot of good signings during free agencies, a lot of big pickups. Pittsburgh's offense was terrible last year. I don't know if Russell Wilson and Justin Fields solved that, although I do appreciate the effort. And the Steelers' offensive line wasn't great, and I believe they have some injuries there too. So check your injury report here. Either way, I expect an Atlanta team that had a pretty good defense and a strong running game to be an all-around better offense with a major upgrade with Kirk Cousins at quarterback. Moving on, we got Tennessee. They're plus 170 straight up at Chicago. The current line's minus 4.5. I think I like Chicago more than most. Uh, I don't know if I trust a rookie quarterback in his first game. Minus 4.5, so that number's... A little bigger than I expected. How much has Chicago's offensive line improved? And how do all these new pieces mesh together? So maybe this is just a watch game and see how Chicago performs. But I do expect them to win. And I would, if pressed, take them minus four and a half over a Tennessee team that I really don't expect too much from. Okay, another one we bet on. And if you watch the show in the pod, you already got this at a smaller number. But Houston is now a minus two and a half uh, road favorite at Indy. The number's 48 and a half. I could see this being over as well. But I do think Houston minus the points is the stronger bet. They are on the road, but I feel like they're better all the way around. It's one of two home dogs, and I like 
both of the home dogs. We'll get to that a little bit later. But as long as you have Houston, it's still minus three. I think this is a no-brainer. This is one you might want to even do a double unit on. Really like Houston here at Indianapolis. All right, next up, another one that we really like. We got Jacksonville at Miami. Uh, surprising to me, uh, money's coming in on Jacksonville. People seem to overhype and really like the Jags. Uh, I want to say this opened up at minus three and a half. If you can get it at minus three, it's definitely worth betting. Miami's at home. They've start, started strong uh, in the last couple of years. They were six and three last year, uh, opening up against the spread. Uh, my, minus three, three is just too much value. I think Miami is the team that should be getting the hype that the that the Jags have. I like Tua better than Lawrence, which I know most people don't agree with. I definitely like Miami's we uh, weapons at wide receiver better. I like their team speed. The only concern I have with Miami is their offensive line isn't the greatest. They might have some injuries there. And against a tough Jacksonville defensive line. But still, if you can get Miami for minus three, I'd take that bet. All right, moving on. We got Arizona at Buffalo. Uh, this one's a little tricky, at least for me. Buffalo's minus six. I like Buffalo a lot. Normally, I, I, would, I would jump on that. That line's moving. I think Arizona's going to be better this year. They have some new wide receiver weapons. And Josh Allen happens to be missing two of his biggest weapons from last year. Bills weren't so great as a favorite last year. I'm going to look at the injury report before I do anything with this. You know, Arizona might have some defensive line issues. Maybe this is somewhere you consider, consider an over. So uh, check the injury report here. I'd lean Buffalo minus the six. Okay, the next one is interesting. We got New England at Cincinnati. This was minus nine and a half. It's dropped to minus eight and a half. I'm not sure if this has to do with... Uh, Questions about Jamar Chase. And it's a big number, but I really think New England's going to suck this year. Uh, you know, Brissett is going to be the quarterback behind a bad line. I know since he has started slow, which is maybe, you know, kind of has me looking to not necessarily lay a bet yet, although if I did, it would be on Cincinnati. It's also worth considering the under here. I don't think New England puts up a lot of points. I think. You know, 17 is probably their cap. I could definitely see them scoring a lot less than that. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But I think a lot of New England three and outs is going to give Cincinnati a chance to score some points here. All right, and one of the more boring games that uh, I'll, I'll definitely catch some of is uh, Carolina at New Orleans. Both of these teams are pretty disappointing. Uh, they play in probably the weakest division in the NFL they're going to be battling for the basement in my opinion I see a lot of people talking about Carolina money line here or Carolina with the points I gotta see it first their offense just looked really abysmal last year uh, maybe I need to look into more of the moves they made uh, in the offseason but I'd stick with Saints here minus four uh, again not something we're going to look to bet as you know the Saints started 0-5 against the against the spread last year. But, you know, I think people realize they're not really a good team this year. But neither did Carolina. So I'd go with Saints minus 4. All right, the other uh, road favorite we have here. This is Minnesota at the Giants. Minnesota's minus 1, which is essentially a pick em. I went back and forth on this. My initial thought was Minnesota has just the overall better team. They do have Justin Jefferson. I could also see neighbors having a big game. The Giants were 5-2-1 against the spread at home. It is on their home field. However, at minus one, I'll probably lean Minnesota's way. I could also look at the over on a small number, 41.5, as Minnesota was able to uh, put up points without Cousins last year. And uh, I don't know if Flores' defense is going to be ready week one. And I think Neighbors is going to surprise some people this year. All right, Denver at Seattle. Uh, this is one I, I think I'm def definitely going to just watch and see what happens. I'm not sure here. 
You got a rookie quarterback on the road. I like Seattle for that reason, as well as I just don't trust Denver's offense anyhow. However, I don't really trust Seattle's offense that much either. And this is a line that's growing from minus five, minus five and a half. I think it's minus six. Uh, you know, if it gets towards the touchdown range, I might flip my mind and, and go Denver at that point because points could be at a premium. Uh, I'm looking at, at, at maybe doing the under here as well, despite the low number at 41 and a half. Um, I could see this being a uh, struggle between the teams having decent defenses and the offenses being challenged, but the spread keeps growing, so keep an eye on that. Okay, and then the game that's surprising me the most, I'm going to say the Raiders at the Chargers. Chargers are minus three and a half. I'm seeing a lot of people say Raiders money line. And this isn't just people from Vegas. The number is 42 and a half. I know the Raiders did a number on the Chargers last year. But Harbaugh's in the fold. I know the Chargers lost some weapons. But what it really comes down to that makes it hard for me to ever bet on the Raiders is whatever option they're going with at quarterback whether it's Michu or O'Connell, they haven't looked good. Will the Raiders pass rush be able to uh, get at possibly a, a hobbled quarterback? You know, a lot of people are looking Raiders plus points here. I'm not sure. I think I'm still leaning towards the Chargers. I have faith in Harbaugh at home. I know people that have been on the Chargers the last couple of years have probably done pretty poorly. And I don't like the Chargers like that, but I'm not I'm not buying fully into the Raiders yet at this point. And the game is in LA, and despite that not being a great home field advantage, I'm gonna lean the Chargers here given the points. Definitely an avoid, but something to watch to see which way uh, both of these teams go that I don't really expect to be a factor this year. Okay, here's another one that we're looking to bet. We got Dallas at Cleveland. This line's actually moved. I want to say Dallas uh, a couple months ago was a one-point favorite. Now they're a two-and-a-half-point dog. So that concerns me that there's a lot of money on Cleveland when Dallas tends to be an overrated commodity. But no matter how I look at it, I like Dallas' money line here. And the biggest reason is Deshaun Watson's starting quarterback. He's coming off an injury. He hasn't looked good since he's left Houston. I think the biggest thing people are looking at that are pushing this line is, you know, Cleveland was 8-1 and at home last year, and Dallas wasn't great on the road. But I, I really just think Dallas is more talented all the way around. You look at the teams, yes, Cleveland probably has the best defense or in that conversation in the National Football League. And they added Jim Schwartz, who's a great coach uh, when it comes to defense. But I think Dallas finds the way to get some points on the board. They also have a pretty good pass rush. And Cleveland's offense has been uh, pretty anemic for the most part. List off some of the playmakers from Cleveland and then tell me how comfortable you feel betting on that team. I'm going Dallas Moneyline here. This is a team that's won like 12 games three years in a row and maybe they've went from an overrated commodity to an underrated commodity we'll see another interesting game we got washington at tampa bay tampa bay's minus three and a half you know if that number was a little smaller i might consider tampa bay but really this is probably just a, an avoid two teams i don't trust washington's going to be starting a rookie quarterback so Probably in a void here. Uh, the number's 43, which I don't really feel too good about one way or the other either. But definitely interesting to see how Washington performs. And then finally, we got two more games. We got the Sunday night game. This should be a great game. Uh, if you got on the over early like we talked about, I think you got a good bet. That number's drove up to 51. So maybe not such a great bet at this point, but I still like the oversight of it we bet detroit money line on this uh months ago 
We expect Detroit to win. I expect JMO to have a big season. If you've watched the podcast, you you know that's one, one of our best bets of, of the year. The three and a half point number is scary. So I, I'm not going to give up three and a half in a game that's going to be probably a close offensive shootout. And with a team with, like the Rams where you have a lot of uh, guys that get injured, you know, this is hel- as healthy as they're going to be all season. Again, the game's in Detroit. I do like them to win. I do like them money line a lot. Um, but giving up the points, I, I, I'm, I might lean Detroit, but but I wouldn't bet Detroit giving up three and a half because the Rams is, are one of those teams I tend to like more than most people. And I think if Matt Stafford has time to throw the ball, they're always going to be a pretty good offense. And then finally, wrapping it up with the Monday night game, we got the New York Jets at San Francisco. I need somebody in the comments to kind of tell me what I'm missing here. But San Francisco is a minus six favorite on this. Now there's minus three and a half. So I'm looking to put a bet in on this. I don't understand. I don't know that Aaron Rodgers makes that much difference. I know Wilson was terrible, but... So is the offensive line on that team, and he hasn't played in a while and is older. I feel like San Francisco is better pretty much across the board everywhere else. And despite the Jets having a really good defense, I expect San Francisco to win this game. And I'm not going to be worried about three and a half points. So that's the whole slate for uh, week one. We're going to get the power rankings going after those games concluded. We'll probably push our picks back later into the week. But as always, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comment section, and we can have that discussion. Thanks for watching.